Hey, welcome back to the blog. It is time for another update. I hope you guys have all been doing great. I've got some fun things to show you today. Hey, before we get started, would you do me a huge favor? Would you subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the bell notification? Um, I'm really trying to grow my channel and would love for your help. And I, you probably notice I do some aviation stuff and then what I do actually for a full-time job here in Utah, I have a weekly outdoor hunting and fishing show. It's called Hooked on Utah. So I do post some of those episodes kind of randomly for people to see. Uh, but I've been airing it for 12 years, 52 shows a week, um, hunting, fishing, UTVing. So um, you'll see some of those on the channel. But hey, let's get going. I want to show you uh, I've made a huge amount of progress on the Highlander, and um, I'm pretty pumped about it. So, going to kind of take you uh, in succession of things that I've been working on, and uh, and then show you uh, some really, really cool stuff. So, here we go. Come on. Over the last, let's say, month or so, I have really been working hard on the airplane. So here's the deal. I've got, I've got my sunlight in right here. It's all built in, ready to go. Both doors, I took the other one off, but I wanted to show you. I have both doors in, and they work beautifully. They're absolutely awesome. I've left all the plastic on. Um, you know, I did a couple of things when I installed my doors. I actually put double-sided tape in here, kind of a, a VRB style tape. I actually painted. So I went to the painstaking process of painting, actually first um, etching with an etcher, um, my aluminum rivets. Then I primed and painted them. Then I put a little piece of rubber foam um, I've actually got a piece like this, so I would take a piece of this foam and stick it to the front of my rivet gun and rivet so that the impact didn't actually uh, pop the paint off. And then I got to give a huge shout out to Sean Talpin. Hope I pronounced that correct. Up in Alaska, he's got that wicked cool um, super stall with the see-through bottom on it. And Sean told me, hey, he. He went to Wag Arrow and got these black rivets. So thank you, Sean. Um, I bought a couple hundred of these same style rivets, but they're anodized black. So as I move forward with the black, that's what I'm gonna be doing. But I'll tell you what, the windows were, they weren't as bad as I thought they were gonna be, and the doors, they turned out really, really nice. Um, I decided that what I would do is take mine right here and put my seam as tight as I could against here. I, I've seen some have them overlap, you know, and then overlap in the back, come back here, and overlap right back here. I chose to go the direction of having it push in and seal, and I'm gonna show you why. Um, and then, you know, I've got it to where the seal, you can see, is really clean right there, down the yellow tape against that with a little bit of rubber seal in there, it seals up super tight. And there's room for expansion on there, but I decided to go that direction because I wanted to eliminate um, just, you know, normally having this, this out and having A1 chafing right here, and then just having the airflow go in. So um, that's, that's kind of one thing on the doors. And then I'm gonna show you, I, you know, each door, when you hang them, they hang differently. You know, they're up, but I did the, you know, the full frames that you have made. They're already put together, and then you cut out your plexi, and probably the way almost everybody does it now. And you'll notice that when you, when you seal your door here, down here at the bottom, and you turn the lock, every door seals differently. Like this door, it has a tendency to seal in really tight up here. It pulls in tight, but this bottom corner poked out. The door on the co-pilot side did just the opposite. The bottom tucked in really tight and the upper um, kind of poked out. So I did something unique that I want to show you. I put on my door right here and I'll show you from the other side. I made a latch, a little lever. Can you see that? And what that is, is it's on a, it's a rivet put in there with a two nylon washers, one on each side so that it can freely rotate. 
and then I'll show you from the other side you come on over here and so as you can see when I come over here and I pull the door in tight if I turn my normal latch I don't quite get the seal so I can actually flip this latch right there and now let me show you from the outside so when you come back around and you look at the outside take a look at that that's tucked in nice and tight I mean it the seal goes underneath here but then if you look at that door frame that's just perfect and same thing goes for these here you know once you seal those up they're perfect they fit look at that seam perfect so doors both of them are on uh, the next thing that I did is I built my closeouts right here and I did these kind of a unique way well I thought it was unique somebody's probably already beat me to this idea but that is aluminum that's been etched, primed, and painted. I use those sweet black rivets that Sean told me about at Wag Arrow. And we're all notched up to fit. Everything looks great. One of the things I did here, when I drilled through my skylight, I put a rubber, just a little rubber seal in there that pops in and sits in there. It's got a, a rim on it, so it's super tight. So I can actually push that bolt up through that hole and down and and we'll see how that fits. I think it's gonna work great. But my closeouts are all done. And let me show you how I did those. So come over here to this side. Again, so if you take a look, you can see that um, what I did is I bent that on a 90 degree angle. And then I riveted it in and then it, sli it slides out. So same thing here. So here's this 90 degree angle and then you come out, it comes back out right here and it's riveted. So I think I've got what I have, one, two, three, four, five rivets there. And then I've got five rivets across the back on this side right across there. And those closeouts are done. Painted, kind of notched, looking good. And uh, so the closeouts are all done. So next item, I have been working super hard on my windshield and so there is the extreme windshield from the man rd richard sheepdog holtz that is his sweet molded so this is the actual plexiglass molded windshield um, and his boot cow which is all fit and cut and trimmed and on and ready to go and so when i show you my 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 uh panel on the inside um, I did get a comment from my good buddy Steve Henry who said, hey, you know, you probably need to change your panel if you want to take full advantage of the visibility of the extreme windshield. And he is 100% correct. And as I thought about it, um, because I'm doing the Garmin uh, G3X Touch, I'm doing an iPad insert. Um, and I, again, there's, I think when you look at this windscreen, there's form and function, right? And so form is it's absolutely sexy as heck. I love the styling. I love the way it looks with that smaller boot cow, the whole nine yards. And the way I have it set up, I do get better visibility than I believe with the, with the factory boot cow. Um, and I went with the plexiglass because it's molded and it's stiffer and firmer than the Lexan they provide you with. To, and, and I'm doing that to take advantage of the I'm going to have the horsepower of the um, Edge Performance 300 Ti and, you know, blasting it hard with that extra blast, prop blast. I believe that this is going to stand up and weather a lot better than the Plexi. You're not going to get that flopping and stuff. So, um, my two cents on that. So, there it is. There's the boot cowl. There's a door. You're getting kind of a look at what, what it's going to look like. Um, this took quite a bit of time. and. And first off, getting the windscreen in took time because you're gonna put it in, lay it up there, mark it. You gotta get the former in and, and you're trying to get that former, which you know is behind here. So the former's already put in. You build up your firewall with this piece of stainless steel that just a little extra to make it fit and match the former in there. Then I painted the former jet black so it kind of disappears. And then in the former, you know, you're, 
you're working dang hard to get this nice shape and a, and a seal up there. Um, it takes some time, so be careful. Just go real slow. I just I took off a little piece of the of the windshield at a time. Carefully taped it, masked it all off. When I drilled my holes, I used the um, I use these acrylic drill bits that you can get. Richard sent me a couple, and I think they're super important. You know, they're designed to go right through that acrylic and not split it. And so I just, I was super careful in how I fit, getting everything to fit. Um, and then you're just going to Clico and you're going to open up those holes just a teeny bit initially. Because if you do that, you allow uh, for an easier fitment. And then I'm going to open them up because up at the top, I've actually done uh, rib nuts on the inside and my, my plate that goes across there that Richard uh, provides you with, um, that's going to mount, you know, it already mounts up and I'm, I'm doing rib nuts, so a little bit bigger opens, openings and I'll do the same thing here um, across that. So that's looking pretty sweet. Sorry, I keep banging this piece of tin down by my foot. So there is kind of what she's looking like from one side. I mean, it's a lot of work, lots and lots of work. So, okay, so coming around the front, you know, I put in some cam locks. I started putting my cam locks in and getting those set up and ready to go. Um, so we're looking good there. There's the boot cowl. So again, I'm going to show you, I, I built my, there is, that's my glare shield. And there's my panel mocked up. Well, it's actually in place, ready to go. I've covered it with gray suede. And that's what she's looking like. I think it looks really good. You do get the additional visibility out of the sides, but it's not, if you're not, you know, if you take it down and you follow the bars here or you to cut this way down, I think you get a lot more visibility. But because I'm going to do the 10 inch, G3X touch, cutting it down, it meant I could carve those corners off, but I chose not to. Again, there's form and function, and I went for a little more form on this one in terms of the, I love the way that the boot cowl, the windscreen, yeah, the extreme windshield is freaking awesome. And then I went for function on the panel for what I'm putting in, inside it versus going the opposite direction, which was you know, function for uh, the utilizing the best opportunity to get the most visibility out of the extreme windshield. And, I, I, you know, it's what you want, I guess. So that's what I ended up doing. So, you know, right there, there it is, man. And I'm gonna tell you, I made this out of one piece, 16th inch ABS plastic. So that's ABS plastic right there. Um, what I did is I laid out a, I took the windscreen off and then I laid out a piece of this poster board. And I'll show you right here. Dude, I don't have a lot of space. I know some of you guys have bigger shops, but I don't. So I took and I made a poster board, cut out, taped it all together with the windscreen off so that I could stand in front. I was standing right here and then I lay, I cut it, laid it in, bent it, got it all to shape with this off and the boot cowl off. Once, once I had that in place, then I took one big piece of 16th inch, um, show you a piece of it. That's what it looks like. That's the ABS plastic right there. 16th inch. And I actually just laid that on top. I marked it. And let me tell you what, this stuff is so easy to work with. If you score it carefully, if you lay down a straight edge on it and you score it, it just snaps right off. It's, it's super cool. You just bend it, pop, and it comes off perfectly clean. You can run some sandpaper down it and it looks stunning. And so I marked it off, snapped it in place, snapped it, laid it up in there, and it almost went in perfect the first time. Just a few small modifications. And then what I did is I got my suede from my very, very thin suede from a, just a local fabric company. And I la laid it out on this table right here. And then what I did is I used, show you. I ended up using this Super 77 3M multi-purpose adhesive. 
This stuff is wicked sticky. You're gonna wanna be really careful when you start spraying this stuff on. And I just sprayed it on the, on first on the surface, gave it 30 seconds, and I laid, I actually laid my material out on this table, and I marked it with this material pencil, white one, so I knew exactly, and I did a one inch boundary around it. I laid it on there, and pressed it all down, let it dry, and then I just folded my corners up nice and neat and trimmed them, and that's where I ended up. So, I ended up with that right there. I hope you guys like it. So, all right, so that brings me to one of the coolest things that I've done on the airplane. My, I'll say one of my biggest issues with the Stewart systems versus Oratex. And I think people face this with um, the other brand. And that is, um, is it the polyfiber brand or, yeah, something like that. But you, you put that Stewart systems on and you get the green glue look or the other one, you, you get the pink glue look. And you know, the carpet kit that comes with, that comes with the Highlander when you buy it, their deluxe kit, um, being nice, it's outdated. It's not made for this, this Highlander. It was probably 10 years ago. It's probably for a, a whatever version that was. It doesn't fit in there. You have to cut it up and it's scratchy, heavy, it's ugly. Even the, even the piece that goes over your yokes, the nice piece with the boots on it, that um, absolutely was made for a different model. No matter way, how you lay it in, it does not fit perfect. And neither does the floor piece that goes in with the heel mats on it. It's not quite as wide and as big. And So again, come on, Just Aircraft, update that stuff. Uh, that's where I think some other brands are beating you. Uh, it's some of the fit and finish things. Um, but obviously the Highlanders kick butt playing because Steve Henry, yeah baby, just keeps racking and stacking them up at the Stoll competition. So keep winning it for the Highlanders. We love it. Um, so here's what I did. Biggest thing I struggled with, I've lamented over for a long time, is what to do with my interior and how to make it look good. And humongous shout out to Craig Tim in Florida. Craig is a rock star. I hope you guys are watching his stuff that he's posting on... Uh, the um, Highlander Super Stole group on Facebook. But man, the, the detail work, Craig, it's, I mean, it's pure airplane porn, it's awesome. So uh, Craig sent me a product, I'm gonna show you here in a minute, but I wanna show you this product, I was able to black out my interior. All of this is done with his product. All of that with his product all the way back. My floorboards are what I did with a carbon fiber wrap. There is my interior completely blacked out and blacked out. Look at that. Tell me that does not look freaking awesome. These are the ABS plastic pieces that I put in with some trim on them. You can see the trim there and they're Velcro in place. There's kind of a shot of it. This trim going up here. But look at this right here. This stuff is so amazing. It goes on so easy. When you brush it on, it, it takes two light coats and you get this rich, deep black look. And I'm telling you, there's no weight, almost absolutely. I guarantee you there's, you might have added an ounce or two when it's dry of weight in there, but look at that. I mean, tell me that is not freaking awesome. So I'm gonna show you what I did, but I hope you guys like that. Craig, this product is incredible. So easy, here's something cool. You can paint your aluminum with it, um, but if you do, if you, I started masking everything off and you really don't need to, because you can brush it and then it doesn't really stick very well to, to your powder coated stuff or the aluminum. So if there's a little bit of over, you just rub your thumb on it like that and it comes off the aluminum. But you can rub the fabric all you want and it stays jet black. It adheres to it. So it absolutely makes cleaning up and taping off so easy. But look at that. That is so black. When your seats are sitting in there, I don't even have to add that carpet kit now. I mean, that's my finished interior. So I got to show you what the product is. This, that's it right there. It's called That Black Stuff. It's called Black Trim Restore has no silicone in it, it's permanent, and it rocks. Craig Tim, um, that's who you wanna reach out to on, um, dude, I don't know if you guys could even hit that with your 
phone. Bing, you might be able to get it right there. Try it. Craig Tim, go ahead and hit him on Facebook and he will get you some bottles, sell these to you. One bottle did almost my entire, did a full coat on everything. A second bottle covered everything else up. Let me just show you how I applied it. I simply poured it into a plate and I used these foam brushes like this. And I actually had a different, another um, medium size and then I used one of these brushes. It's super easy. I like these foam brushes for two reasons. There were no brush strokes. When mine dried, because once it was almost dry, you could just kind of take the wider one and just kind of go over it, drape over it like that. And it laid out beautifully and black. And then with the sharp edges, I could get right in those corners and just dab like that. Sit and dab it in the corner and it, it filled in the tight corner lines like this. So wherever you had, you know, a, a pipe or anything like that or tubing, you could just take it and, and it fills it right in. And then I would just do light brush strokes on it. And, you know, again, this is going to be covered with the floorboard, but still you don't, you get the, pe the green peeking through in certain areas. And I just hated that. It drove me nuts. And then this was all green back there. But look at that. That is just black as black. It goes on so easy. It dries super fast and it's permanent. And the other thing is it smells like key lime pie. So when you're, you're in here, man, you do to make you hungry. My wife came in. She's like, Ooh, what have you been eating? And I was actually painting with the black stuff. So again, it's called that black stuff. That's it right there. That black stuff. It's awesome. Craig Tim, Florida. Um, check him out on the Highlander Superstole group in Facebook, which you guys are watching this video from that or one or the other one. But if you're running any kind of airplane and you want to black out your material, instead of adding something, I was going to try to glue um, black or gray suede in there. And I am so glad I didn't. That would have been a sticky train wreck. This stuff, I literally did my entire inner fuselage in two hours going slow. You could knock it out in an hour if you wanted. Um, and I did a second coat after it dried. I just let it dry overnight just to be sure. Came back in, did a nice another wet coat on it and <laughs> she looks awesome. So those are my updates. There it is, guys. There's the, you know, the extreme windshield with the extreme boot cowl. Again, I went with the panel that's a little bigger to meet what I'm doing avionics wise. I get it, you know, some guys are going for a race plane and as light as they can get it. Obviously, I'm not. I'm going for kind of a, a blend. I want a good, comfortable, fun, backcountry light plane that's going to perform. I don't want a big old pig. But at the same time, I am going for just a little bit more creature comforts and a few things like that. My doors are on. Both doors are done. All my plexi's done. You know, when you look at the airplane, I mean, it's right now I've got avionics and harness uh, that I'm working on and I'm doing that with Stein Aviation they're helping me out there and then shout out to Jason Jason's got my motor crossing my fingers come on Jason and uh, pretty soon I've got my we'll be working up here putting the motor on everything else is ready to rock and roll so you guys are awesome um, love doing these videos you know, interesting, You every once in a while you get kind of some weird comments on the video. So, I don't know, a video or two ago, I had someone tell me that I was too old for my hairdo. I have no idea what that means. I mean, it's just my haircut. So, then I had a guy tell me he hopes I build an airplane better than I frame. And I think he's talking about my shop here. Yeah, okay, it's tiny. You know, it's 30 some odd feet by 15 feet. It's cluttered because I've got an airplane in here, but you know, we are talking. There, just look above my wings right there. I have no idea what he's talking about. Two foot on center. They're perfectly square. Uh, my trusses were built by a company here in Utah, professionally installed. So I guess what he doesn't like is square, straight, two foot on center studs. I don't know, but funny comments from people um strange but you guys rock so hey uh i hope within the next while i've got avionics on my next one um i'm just gonna start my final install so from the tail back man i'm going forward 
and everything is coming together and she is just about ready and like I said the honey badger is looking good I'm super pumped but hopefully within the next month to two months mo maximum I've got my 300 Ti from Edge Performance and Jason Jason and uh, we're installing and getting ready to do I'm doing all the paperwork right now and hopefully we're getting to the point of getting it put together and have a dar come take a look and go boreholes in the sky so hey fly safe be good we'll catch you on the next video